see the light. I'm feeling high, my little lady. I'm gonna take it to the other side. You know why I used to smoke too much. And you know why I used to drink too much. Take a ride in my car. You can't get me high, high. You know why I used to smoke too much. And you know why I used to drink too much. Take a ride in my car. You're gonna get me Hi everyone, Dan here, and I just wanted to put a little snippet about Astroworld and what we do because I want to start getting the word out because I think it's becoming more and more of a, a giant community, and I want to get the word out to some other people. So what we do at Astroworld is we do hold we hold uh, astrophotography chats on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and we just talk astrophotography. Wednesdays more of a techie kind of advanced uh, intermediate, and Fridays is more of a newbie kind of thing. So if you want to check us out and if you want to, you know, hang out with some semi-decent people that like to go off the rails a little bit and have fun while they're doing it, um, come check us out at astroworldweb.com and you can check out the schedule and you can sign up for all the free giveaways that we do. We just gave away an Eagle 4 Pro, an Optolong filter kit, um, uh, Charles Brackenstein's books and a whole bunch of other stuff. So come to astroworldweb.com, hang out with us, have a good time. And as always, remember to keep imaging keep educating, and clear skies. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. to be too.
Just to 
everyone dan here and i just wanted to put a little snippet about astroworld and what we do because i want to start getting the word out because i think it's becoming more and more of a, a giant community and i want to get the word out to some other people so what we do at astroworld is we do hold we hold uh, astrophotography chats on wednesdays at 9 p.m and fridays at 8 p.m eastern time and we just talk astrophotography wednesday's more of a techie kind of advanced uh, intermediate and fridays is more of a newbie kind of thing so if you want to check us out and if you want to, you know, hang out with some semi-decent people that like to go off the rails a little bit and have fun while they're doing it, um, come check us out at astroworldweb.com and you can check out the schedule and you can sign up for all the free giveaways that we do. We just gave away an Eagle 4 Pro, an Optolong filter kit, um, uh, Charles Brackenstein's books and a whole bunch of other stuff. So come to astroworldweb.com, hang out with us, have a good time. And as always, remember to keep imaging keep educating, and clear skies. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.
All right. How's it going, everybody? It's Friday night. It's the weekend already. I can't believe it. And and we're here tonight with uh, Pavel. Uh, is it Kag Kagas? How do you pronounce your last name, Pavel? Yeah, in Czech it's Sagash, but uh, Sagash. Uh, well, I, any pronoun in any pronunciation is okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, pa Pavel is joining us all the way from Central Europe, so it's really late for him. It's like uh, what is it one a.m. over there now, something like that, right? Yeah, even we have summer time, so it's two two a.m. It's in two a.m. Oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> well, but thank you so much uh, for coming and uh, hanging out with us and talk about Moravian because I'm super excited about it. I I want to learn as much as I can about it because Pete has been talking Mar and showing us the what do you got the the C five in your in your in your in your backyard there. No, I got a C four for a C4. CDK seventeen that I'm putting together. Yeah. So yeah, so he's been showing us, and we've all been we've all been drooling about your press picture with the big, with the big C five with sensor. the big <laughs> big sensor on that's it. That's insane. Yeah, that's <laughs> incredible. But uh, before we do get started, um, again, you know, we we do have to say thank you to our uh, sponsors and all of our guests and our member sponsors. So let's 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 get the uh, formalities out of the way here. Um, and uh what we'll do is and we'll just get let's see we knocked off pavel a little bit so give me a second layers mm -hmm. and jesse and and there's there's pavel there we go and all right so so the guests all right so so thank you to our sponsors again we do sponsors all the time and they give us lots of stuff to give away like money and gifts and all that uh, free classes. Uh, it's it's really really a lot of people have been very generous over the past couple of years. So the first one is Woodland Hills Camera and Telescopes. Uh, they give us gift certificates to give away. We give away one every month, and uh, not that not this Friday. Next Friday we'll be giving out another one. So so thank you to Woodland Hills Camera and Telescopes, followed by uh, Prima Luce camera concepts and Optolong filters. We have an LX stream that we still have to give away. Um, and we also have, a, well, we got to figure out what we're doing with Prima Luce. I got to talk to Tom and find out what we're doing this year, but, um, probably won't be as good as last year, but we'll see. So thank you to all them at the red giant level, uh, followed by our friends over at masters of picks insight and IP for AP. Um, these guys, um, uh, Warren, uh, Ron and Pete, uh, thank you so much to all of them. They give us, a, and we're giving away a Masters of Picks Insight workshop tonight um, to get ready for their next workshop. I believe it's this Tuesday coming up. So if you if you if you win, great. If not, go by their next workshop. It's really nice to have two hours with some of the best um, in processing. So so thank you to them. Um, we're still doing member sponsors, everybody. And if anybody wants to join us. Um, on Patreon, join us on Patreon, support the channel. We have a ton of people on there, and plus, there is some uh Patreon only content on there that will be getting bigger as we move on. Uh, but uh, you gotta be it, you gotta be in it to win it. So, so uh, thank you to Sean and Bob at our off the rails level Quasar members. We got we got three Quasar members, John, Hassan, and Chris. Black Hole members, and yes, I know, Charity, you're still waiting on your shirt. It's coming. <laughs> I, I, I finally nailed something down. Uh, George, Mike, Dave, Dan, and Tom, followed by our Red Giant members. Main secret, we, get, we have about 57 members right now, and, and these are just from Patreon and YouTube. So, so thank you so much to everybody that supports the channel. Um, tonight, like we said before, it's we're going to have uh, – uh, Pavel here from Moravian Instruments to talk about his line of of uh, instrumentation, his cameras. And look at that big C5 right there. I think that that that's like the size of a credit card. Uh, but um, <laughs> you know, but but uh, May seventeenth, which is this um, Wednesday, we're gonna have Warren Keller on for part two of his M51 workflow. So he's gonna be coming on and doing the finishing up on m51 that he was doing last month so it's gonna be fun to have him back on um june 2023 um still haven't pulled the date out yet 
but Helena will be on after she graduates high school. So Helena Cochran from Helena's Astrophotography uh, will be on to hang out with us for her uh, premiere, uh, first time on with us on, on the channel. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, if you want to join it, join us on our Discord channel. Please join us on our Discord channel. We have like 120 people on it. It's constantly filled with great content and great questions. So, you know, lots of answers, lots of questions. So join us. We're also on uh, YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube if you're watching us. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hang out with us a little more. We're also on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So, so that being said, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, dealing with my with my spiel here. And we are back to the regular scheduling program here, <laughs> and and we're here tonight with with Pavel. So thank you, Pavel, for staying up really late and hanging out with us. Um, appreciate it so much. Uh, so why don't you just start it off by for for the for some of the people that are new out there that don't know who you are? Why don't you Give a, a little bit of an introduction of yourself and Moravian and, and what you do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, very, very simply, Moravian Instruments is a, is a pure Czech company. Uh, it's owned by, by uh, people who actually work in the company, by engineers and, 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 and software engineers and hardware engineers and, and so on. Uh, we started development of astronomical cameras in the <laughs> in uh, uh, really a long ago around year 2000 with uh, only ccd cameras uh, were available and our first customer was was the masaryk university in brno and uh, later on we switched to to cmos of course and now we have a, a line of cmos cameras from very small guiders pointers up to the very large cameras which are used uh, literally all over the world we we have a camera on concordia station in in antarctica so we uh, we have nice. cameras on all continents <laughs> and uh yeah the I believe the important point is that our cameras are, are made in Europe. Uh, the cameras are designed in Europe and also manufactured in Europe. Uh, um, a lot of lot of things are done here locally in in, in Czechia. Uh, and another important point is. Uh, we are, of course, astronomers, amateur astronomers, because <laughs> we do cameras for a living but uh we we love our, our cameras we uh, love to work with them we we um, use them in in uh, observation astrophotography uh scientific research and so we never uh we never try to offer our customers anything which we do not personally test it and, and which we think it should be should be useful and and, and so well uh I, i'm appropriate to uh, i have some slides which i can show but it depends on the time which is available for for a presentation yeah um, yeah i think yeah we have the time if you oh, we got plenty of slides. time so uh you know yeah. we got, uh, oh, oh, yours. Yeah. Okay, so I will uh, I will uh, launch a presentation and uh, I can share the screen. Yep. It's sorry. It's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm. Uh, yeah. There you go. So there hopefully you, you yeah. can you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, Marian Instruments, as I said, is a Czech company uh, which started in uh, around year two thousand. Uh, now we switch to Simu sensor for obvious reasons because CCDs are no longer manufactured, and uh, luckily uh, the Simu sensors are. 
Uh, now I can say that CMOS sensors are much better than, than CCD, uh, so it's it's not not a big deal. Uh, our cameras are used for astrophotography uh, by a lot of amateurs, and I believe the very best images are taken with our cameras. We have a, a, it's accessible on our website and. Uh, uh, what uh, really, really world-class uh, astrophotographers use our cameras. But our cameras are also used, uh, yeah, say, I don't, I don't know if you can see it here, but I want to highlight this uh, M1, M, uh, M1 Nebula with perfectly uh, shown uh, pulsar and also the shockwave, which originated on a pulsar. So it's, it's uh, yeah. a very interesting which can be done with on a backyard, yeah. Wow. But our cameras are also used in research. Uh, here I have a few instances of uh, research applications. Uh, for instance, on the, uh, the, the greatest telescope in, in Czechia, the two meter class telescope from Zeiss Jena, uh, that is uh, in, a, in a focal plane we have several cameras that are used for photometry uh, for research uh, here we have the telescope intended for uh, gamma ray burst afterglow uh, follow-up observation uh, we have cameras in chile that's on the iso observatory La. Uh, this is on ASA 1.5 meter class telescope, and so on and so on. Uh, the uh, overview of our cameras, uh, our cameras can be uh, divided according to type of, of sensor. Uh, I mean, the electronic shutter on, uh, in the same sensor. It's a global sensor cameras and a rolling shut, uh, global shutter sensor and a rolling shutter sensor cameras. Uh, the sensor size is from really small sensors, uh, approximately uh, four by five millimeters up to up to really really big sensors uh, up to fifty three by forty millimeters. Uh, Here is an illustration showing the oh sizes God. of the sensor. And uh, this is my hand. Uh, and uh, what I have in my hand is a, the, the greatest sensor we currently use. It's a 150 megapixel IMX411, which is used in C5 camera. So it's a really, really huge sensor. It's already soldered on, on some on some back plate, which is, which is used in a camera. Uh, this slide shows how cameras uh, compare to each other, the mechanical part, the C0 and C1, C1 plus, C1 X line, uh, those cameras are symmetrical. Uh, the C0 one and one plus can be used as auto guiders. They uh, are equipped with auto guider port. Uh, C1 X is, uh, is bigger uh, and uh, the symmetrical version is intended for uh, possible use in primary focus uh, of, 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 of telescopes. The asymmetrical version are on the bottom line, C2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, the asymmetrical version uh, offers uh, the, the body of the camera is, is bigger. So uh, the asymmetrical version offers better cooling, more, more uh they can achieve lower temperature of a sensor but they also are they are also equipped with mechanical shutter so if you want to take dark frame or bias frame you just instruct uh using just software take dark frame and the shutter closes and and you can take a dark frame or bias frame so it's not necessary to uh, run to the telescope coverage and, and so on wow nice uh, here is a, a chart of, of conversion of, of sen quantum efficiency of, of sensor sensitivity. And it's, it's obvious that the modern CMOS sensor uh, approach the, the very best class of E2V sensor, uh, which 
um, I, I mean the CCD sensor which are on, on Hubble Space Telescope and uh, or Kepler Telescope or now on TESS. Uh, those sensors offer up to 95% uh, quantum efficiency, but the modern modern uh, CMOS sensor offer also around 85-90% efficiency. So, so the sensitivity is, is really great. Uh, but for research application, it's very important uh, to have linear response to light. Uh, so the researcher can can rally on the fact that the highest uh, highest level of of uh, counts in a sensor uh, linear corresponds to the uh, amount of light. So the linearity of modern CMO sensor is is excellent. Yeah, I I can say much better than than was the case of CCDs. Only a few CCDs achieve such perfect linear linear response as as modern CCDs uh, as modern CMOS. So so this is this is also uh, very positive news when we switch to when we switch to CMOS. And this, this was a very short overview, and now a couple of new products which we introduced in the last year and this year. Uh, so first, we introduced new C2 camera with the IMX533 sensor, which is pretty popular. It's pretty small camera, small resolution, but the sensor is really great. It, it's really very, very good sensor. We have an upgraded version of C1X cameras uh, with the possibility to launch exposures using hardware trigger, triggering. And uh, another possibility is to use a GPS module for uh, very precise uh, timing of exposure times. Uh, this is not that important for astronomical photography, but for applications like uh, astrometry or space debris monitoring, it's, it's a very important uh, feature. Then we uh, already have a, a C4 camera with a GSEN sensor uh, with backside illuminated version uh, that's uh, similar to already well known 4040 sensor from, from, G, uh, from uh, GPixel. But this version is backside illuminated with much higher quantum efficiency. Uh, quantum efficiency is around 90-95%, which is uh, definitely above the 65 or 70% of front side illuminated sensor. Uh, otherwise, the sensor is the same. I mean, the resolution is the same. Uh, pixel size is the same. Uh, then we introduced C5 cameras, uh, and uh, we plan to introduce, a, in addition to a symmetrical version of C5, we plan to introduce a symmetrical version of C5, which is uh, also, uh, th those cameras are developed uh, um, to, the, to the request of our customer who want to, who want to use those cameras in primer focus of relati a relatively small telescope. And a symmetrical version is, is uh, not that suitable for, for this purpose. So the C2, C2 9000 with IMX533 sensor is a typical C2, but it's the first, first um, C2 version with a rolling shutter sensor. All other C2 cameras have global shutter sensors. So this is kind of exception in the C2 line. Uh, the sensor, as I said, is uh, very, um, very good. It, it, it has literally zero uh, amplifier glow. So it's, it's, uh, the, the field is uniform. Uh, the read noise is very low. Uh, and in fact, the sensor belongs to the same family like sensors in C3 and C5. Only difference is that the digitization is not 16 bit, but only 14 bit. And the sensor is, is quite small. It's only 11 by 11 millimeters, uh, which could be, um, which could be uh, pretty useful when, when we have telescope, which is not that great to cover a large field or, of, of view. So even the, the moderate telescope can cover this sensor pretty with a pretty good image. This is how the C2 
this is how it, it looks like now here it's shown with the canon eos uh, bayonet adapter for for lens but we also offer other, other adapters of course uh next version uh, next next uh, new new uh, new product is a, a version of c1x camera with a gps port a hardware trigger uh the mm, gps module is the same like on the c5 cameras and we have two variants of gps module one variant is with internal antenna and other variant is with the external antenna uh the difference is is obvious yeah, with the for gps receiver with external antenna you have to attach antenna otherwise the, the receiver doesn't work uh but the external antenna provides much better reception that's that's that simple uh, you you can achieve uh, fix to to satellites much faster and you can receive signal from much more satellites with external antenna uh, this is how the c1 x camera looks like with antenna so uh on the left is the original version uh on the right side this is a version with a uh, attached GPS module and an external antenna. Hey, hey Pavel. Uh, um, yeah. How how much does that weigh, the C1? Do you know? Sorry. How, how much does it weigh? Yeah, the weight. Oh, yeah. I have to ch check uh, our website. It's about one kilogram. About two pounds, two or three pounds. Okay. 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 I, I I believe uh, I, I I can tell uh, exactly because if I go to our website and go to the products C1X and there is a product page uh, and then in mechanical. Link power supply mechanical specification. Oh, it's it's, it's uh, 0 0.85 kilograms, it's less than two pounds. Yep, yeah, that's nice. Okay, uh, okay, uh, here is a comparison of the original, original C1X, uh, which offered the power supply filter wheel uh, connector. Uh, and USB USB uh, connector, and the new version of uh, includes also the trigger input, and uh, this this is the cover of G GPS module port. So if the GPS module is not used, it's just covered with uh, with some uh, some black plastic. Uh, uh, otherwise, those cameras are are identical and can be can be used uh, same way. Uh, the SIP software, uh, the new version of SIP software. Uh, contains a, a new tab in a, uh, image control. Uh, it's a GPS tab, and the GPS tab shows the information if, whether the receiver is present and what the, um, what the you know, geographical location and what's the exact time. Uh, the main purpose of GPS is timing of exposures. That means the uh, if the GPS is uh, present and uh, if it's locked on satellites, then the precision of exposure timing is better than microsecond, uh, which is which is very 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 yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, so new version of C4 with backside illuminated sensor. Uh, here's conversion of uh, the CCD uh, KAF. Uh, 16,803, that's the, that's the famous sensor used in G4, G4 cameras. Uh, and the middle is uh, quantum efficiency of the front side illuminated G-Sense 4040 sensor. And then on the right side is a uh, quantum efficiency of the backside illuminated uh, G-Sense 4040 sensor, especially in ultraviolet uh, light the, the quantum efficiency is, is excellent and yeah. for applications uh, for ultraviolet uh, detection it's, it's it's really great sensor otherwise those cameras are the same 
there are a few differences like the backside illuminated sensor does not support hardware binning so binning must be done by software but it's it's not that important it's for astro mm -hmm. for usage in astronomy uh it's it's uh, totally unimportant and uh the <laughs> Uh, the best cameras we ever <laughs> developed <laughs> it is the C5. Uh, the C5 cameras are designed for the 100 megapixel and 150 megapixel Sony sensors. And the front cross section of the camera is the same like C3 and C4, but the, the, the design of cooling is different. It's much more powerful. Uh, because the sensor is much bigger and uh, it, it needs much much higher cooling uh, because of, of uh, thermal losses. Uh, that, that also means that the power plug is different. It's not the simple uh, simple power jack. It's a new four four pin connector, uh, which is capable to to handle higher current than than the standard sensor plug. Uh, the C5 also can be equipped with a GPS module. Uh, this slide shows the camera without GPS module, uh, with a GPS module with internal antenna. This is the orange orange uh, cover covers the yep. entire GPS module. And on the button, there is a camera with an external antenna. Uh, the GPS model is exactly the same like the one used on C1X cameras. So this is the, the same same GPS model. Uh, yeah, I, I already described the mechanic is, is, is similar. Uh, also, C5 cameras are equipped with mechanical shutter. So it's possible to, to take darks even if you have some open tube or, um, or or you cannot just simply cover the, the telescope yeah. uh, and here is the c5 on my observatory in fact in fact i am now sitting a couple of meters under the under the dome uh, with this 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 is my telescope with this camera uh, because I, I said it in the introduction uh, we use our products <laughs> as yeah. to, to 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 be sure that they are really uh, they are really working well. And what scope uh, and is that that you have it on? What 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 kind of telescope? Sorry? What telescope do you have? Yeah, it on? it's a it's a custom made uh, twelve inch Newton with a with a paracore big three inch corrector. But I just uh, plan to upgrade to to four inch corrector from uh, from ASA from. Astro system of Austria uh, to, to cover the entire sensor of, of large C5 camera. So, wow. in, in fact, this this telescope will be will be moved away from the observatory soon, and will be replaced with a new one, with, which is also 12 inch. Uh, the, the diameter is the same, but but the secondary mirror is bigger because the current one uses 110 millimeter uh secondary mirror and the new one uses 130 millimeter secondary mirror uh for for much bigger um, field of view yeah and this is a yeah uh, this this image it's available also on our website uh this is the first light of c5 camera uh on uh, asa 40 centimeter telescope uh, with a very very fast uh very very fast telescope and extremely large field of view uh so the original image is 150 megapixel image and it's it's really beautiful it's, it's 150 very short. meg right yeah 150 megapixels yeah i just want like you just got a question on that i just wanted to reiterate what you said so yeah uh, and we, as, as I said, uh, we also uh, we plan to introduce the symmetrical version of C5 cameras. I'm sorry, I have only renders. I the the mechanical part is is uh, not not in in black anodizing available yet. So uh, okay. I had to do a computer rendering. Okay. 
But this is a comparison of, of the symmetrical and asymmetrical version of, of, uh, of uh, C5 cameras. The symmetrical version uh, lacks the mechanical shutter. It's not present because there is no way how to how to put a mechanical shutter <laughs> in, in, the, in this body. But, it's too big. Uh, at right. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. But the sensor is big too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sensor is huge, man. Wow. And and you know what? I you know I used to have a, a a mechanical shutter on my S big cameras that I used to use, and yeah, that's the one thing I miss these days is that mechanical shutter, and you can just sit there and do your routine, and you know take darks the same night, and just you know do whatever you got to do. And uh, that, that's one of the benefits of, of having that mechanical shutter there. It's really, really, once, once you have it, you never, want to, you never want it to go away. But unfortunately, in the, uh, in the age of uh, the, the CMOS cameras that have come out and the rolling shutter, um, you know, it, it's changed a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> so. uh, yeah that, uh, it, it's true that uh, that uh me mechanical shutter is not used to actually time exposures with CMOS cameras uh for ccd uh, ccd some ccd offered electronic shutter but the full frame ccd like very popular 8300 version kaf yep. 8300 that's what uh, i had so yep. yeah yeah uh it, it it was a great sensor uh, yeah uh, but uh, this, uh, th those sensors need, need to be covered by shutter when reading. Otherwise, the, the star will star will leave trails uh, as the as the image was shift uh, through the through the sensor. So mechanical shutter was a necessity uh, with those cameras, and uh, it, it took it took time to open and close the shutter. Uh, the in the case of CMOS. Uh, if you start a series of wide exposures, shutter opens and it, it, it uh, remains open uh, until the next exposure is dark or bias, then the shutter closes. And if you stop exposing, then the camera firmware waits a couple of seconds, eight, ten seconds, and then closes the shutter if, if no exposure is, is, is asked. If the next exposure is light and shutter opens if it's dark it, it is kept closed so the shutter uh, works uh, differently than in the case of ccd cameras uh, but for the case you you want to take dark it, it's very useful and also to cover the, the sensor if you accidentally point a scope uh, to sun during day or so so it's always good uh, to to have the, the the sensor covered yeah yeah Absolutely, you know you don't want to fry that thing. But I think, uh, think uh, when you when you when you switch out of the uh, presentation, I think Pete has something to show you, uh, real quick. <laughs> Sorry, I, I I'm uh, I'm not sure. No, you just you no. Know, if you, are you is that presentation finished? Because you just got to log out of the yeah. presentation. Yeah. So I I believe I I. Turned off the, the sharing. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. I, I, I just click stop sharing and I have to, to click the, the. That's okay. The, you know, that, that happens oh, every yeah. time we have a guest because it's a, it's a completely different type of platform. Nobody's used to this platform. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, P. Yeah. What is there it that? Is. Have it looks familiar this to is, me. This is <laughs> it's better. Secret. That's going on a CDK, a plane wave CDK 17. And it's going to be part of an article that will be published in September or October in the um, Sky and Telescope magazine. So we're going to make reference to you on this particular C4 camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a it's a it's a beast, but boy, I tell you what, I can't beast. wait to see what the images look like on this camera. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, it, it's it's true that uh, C4 is a bit tricky. No, no, not C4. I mean the Jason Jason sensor is a bit tricky to, to, to calibrate because the sensor use, uh, in fact, sensor provides two images at once: the high gain and low gain image. 
and the high gain and low gain images combined into 16 bit image, uh, which is uh, pretty good, but it, it introduced some problems when calibrating because, uh, in fact, you have two images, two frames, and uh, the pixel of the uh, resulting frame originates from the high gain or from the low gain frame. And it's also necessary to calibrate it uh, this correctly. So uh, I believe we we describe it in a user manual of, of C4 camera. So there is a there is a description of the procedure which uh, has to be followed to to properly calibrate the image. So so Pavel, if, if I heard this correctly in your presentation, the new version of the C4 camera, which is the BSI camera. You're only going to be able to do two by two software bidding, not two by two hardware bidding. Is that correct? Exactly, because the sensor itself does not support a hardware binning. But uh, honestly, the binning feature of the GSense sensor is uh, uh, I would recommend to use. I would recommend to use software binning even if the hardware uh, of the front side illuminated sensor offers hardware binning. I would recommend to use software binning because the results are better. It's it's less noisy and, and simply better. Yeah. So once again, on the new C4 BSI, we can do two by two, three by three, and four by four binning software, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And also asymmetrical binning. That means you can bind one by four by three or, or whatever combination from one to four on both axes. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, I like that. That is yeah. interesting. So, yeah, in fact, yeah. It, no, I was just wondering, side, you know, you got, you got so many great products. I mean, I've always... I've always heard of Moravia. I've been doing, you know, not as long as Pete has. Pete's been doing this since, like, you know, I don't know, Hubble when he was there. So, I mean, he's just, <laughs> uh, you know, but, um, uh, you know, I've, I've been doing imaging since, I guess, the early 90s to mid 90s to now. And uh, Eric's been doing it quite a while. I know Pete's been doing it quite a while. We've all, We've all heard of Moravian cameras. It's like yes. one of those things that you you look at it and it's like the it's like the golden, you know, challenge. It's, yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's like yeah, it is. It is it, that's like for my retirement fund. That's like the holy grail. You know, just the size of these beasts. It's it's incredible. I mean, I I I um I understand that it's not maybe like the C four isn't necessarily like for my. Right. My Schmidt Cassegrain, although I would love a camera with that, with those, with those pixel sizes, you know, these large, big, you know, pixels, you know, for a long focal length. I think they're fantastic. But yeah, Pete, you got to help me hook, you got to hook me up. You got to help me out getting like a CDK 12 or 17, dude. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I got to figure out, you know, um, I think I got 50 bucks around here somewhere. I can convince Robin to let me borrow, you know, you but, know, so. I mean, that, oh, that's I a good point, <laughs> Eric, Eric, that's a good point. Cause we talk about that on the show, uh, quite a bit on, you know, how to match cameras up to image trains and to get yes. to that nice little sweet spot between, you know, two thirds and two. Uh, on the sampling, you know, so on your arc seconds per pixel. So, where you know your largest, I believe, if I remember, the C five, right? It was a nine micron um, pixel size, if I remember right. Correct. Uh, and, and, and I, I'm afraid that that's not uh, the case. The nine micron is a pixel size of C four camera, oh, not C five. C four. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a, it's a C4, the, the G -Sense, uh, uh, G Sense sensor. But the Sony uh, Sony sensor, the, those sensors using C3 and C1X, C3, C5, uh, the pixel size is 3.76 microns. Yeah. So it's, it's slightly less than 4 microns per, per, uh, per pixel. 
uh, but uh, it, it's uh, mm, as I said, those Sony sensors are really uh, miracles. Uh, simply uh, think about this: we, when when you use a, a G sense uh, with nine micron pixel, you have mm -hmm. about approximately fifty-five thousand electrons per pixel. Wow! Uh, and if you have the much smaller Sony Pixel, the 3.76 microns, you have 50,000 electrons. So the the charge density is much higher of, of the Sony sensor. So you can use binning. Mm -hmm. And if you bin those pixels, uh, you you have much higher dynamic range, which 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 is great. This is re yeah, really. I when, when I first put the, the our first prototype with the Sony IMX4455 sensor on my table and uh, and I did a shot noise um, series of images to characterize pixel to measure the well capacity and so on uh, I, I I hardly could believe what 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 were the results because really the one pixel contains up to 50,000 electrons that that's that's wonderful yeah uh, in fact that's that's a much higher charge density on the on the sensor area than than is the cc in the case of ccd used on hubble or or, or whatever so so um it's not necessary to be afraid of small pixel if if they can hold enough electrons. The dynamic range is, is even better than, than in the case of large rock. You you just bin it. Yeah, you just yeah. bin it. Quick question to ask you, Pavel. On on the C5, the 150, when we're looking at a 65 by 65 millimeter square filter, why is it that we only have access to a five filter wheel carousel instead of at a seven filter wheel carousel? Is there a reason why we cannot look at? I know it's going to be huge. But people want to definitely, they want yeah. to look at LRGB and uh, 3 s 2 so they want to definitely look at in seven. Yeah, we, we are uh, we are aware of, of this, and uh, we plan to introduce a, a new filter wheel. Our filter wheels are now called uh external yeah e e filter wheels and new new line will be standalone filter wheels uh that means the current line of of external because c2 c3 cameras can have filter wheel inside the, the, the body yeah they, they can have internal filter wheel uh, or they can have external filter wheel and uh the idea was that if there is no internal filter wheel inside the camera, the electronics stays idle. So it's possible to just plug the external filter wheel into the electronics. So our filter wheels are really, uh, uh, how to explain it? They do not contain any, electro any electronics, nothing. Everything is in camera and camera controls the filter wheel. Uh, uh, this is the external filter wheel. And the standalone filter wheel, uh, the, the, the shell of the filter wheel the, that contains the power plug and USB plug. So that's like filter wheel from, from other manufacturers. I mean, with an with a, with a independent plug to the computer control and everything. And the standalone filter wheel will be, uh, will be designed in a two wheel uh, there will two wheel with with five positions. So, in fact, you have to keep one position clear because yep. uh, if you have two yep. wheel one over another, one position must be clear, and you have four position in they one field nine. Yep. or in other. Yep. So you have uh, you have eight plus clear uh, positions. But the filter wheel is huge. Yeah, it's really massive. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like the FLI uh, dual filter wheel carousel. So, uh, so on the C5, yeah. on the C5 camera, on the telescope interface, the telescope side interface, what's that uh, thread size? Uh, sorry, I did not understand. Uh, on the C5 camera, 
Yeah. The the adapter that's on the telescope side of the camera, what is that thread size? Yeah, thread size is 85, 85 millimeters with a one millimeter pitch. So it's M85. That's uh, massive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if you if you look at the C5, um, there are also um, threaded threaded holes, uh, so you can use either the M85 thread or uh, or thread holes around around the adapter. So there are two ways how to how to attach camera to the telescope. But the primary it's uh, it's a uh, um, so it's so a, we have the choice of. We, we yeah. have the choice of either bolted or threaded, is what you're saying then. Be, being bolted without, yeah, exactly. without the adapter and then threaded being with the adapter. Uh, no, no. The adapter contains uh, threaded holes. Yeah, it's got holes in that. It fits. But, but my point is this, is if we took that adapter off, we've got, this, we've got the bolts, right? So we could use precise parts. To actually, ah, yeah, yeah, that's another. That, that, that's something different. Yeah, you can always take the adapter off, and you have traded holes. But in, okay. in the case of uh, of C five, uh, well, I can maybe I can show you uh, what I what I mean. And just just while you're looking that up, and and so Norm, no, I would not suggest putting a C five on your Red Cat. Don't do it. <laughs> you 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 could you could buy six red cats with the cost of that. You more than that with the C five. So yeah, I can uh, I can share the screen. Yeah, here it is. So uh, that's C5 in my hand, but it's it's, it's a, only the hundred megapixel version, and uh, you can see this is the uh, this is the M85 uh, thread, and those eight uh, holes uh, can be also used to attach the camera. So this is um, in the in the in the front side of of, of the camera. It's maybe it could be seen here too. Yep. So, so just just to be sure once again on that, uh, Pavel, if I did take off that M eighty five adapter, then I would get a precise parts that would be bolted. Or is there female threads on the that telescope side of that camera with the adapter removed? Uh, no, no. With the adapter removed, well. Uh, our cameras are designed uh, with a tiltable adapter, so the adapter can be can be very slightly uh, adjusted to uh, to put the sensor uh, perpendicular to the optical axis. The adjustment is done by by the pushing and pulling screws. That's that's normal normal adjustment. And so if you are those push pull, are those, those small push pull screws those are the small grub screws right uh, those three yeah. small yep. okay yeah, yeah it yeah. looks like uh, you know and one thing i got to say you know there are some other camera makers out there that make the lovely tilt adapter on it that you know once you put a filter wheel on it you can't kind of touch it. it at all and uh, it. it looks great. like that it's 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 nice to see that people are starting to come out with tilt plates that, you, that are actually functional um, when you're adding accessories on. Because once you add accessories on some of these other cameras, um, you can't even touch them. Yeah, I like the forward. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. That that that's the way you do it. Just like that, yes. you take the you take the tilt plate off, you put the filter wheel on, then you put the tilt plate back on the filter I'm wheel. Put it back on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the tilt adapter is always on, but it's still possible to re well. Uh, it, I'm not sure if I can explain it clearly. Uh, the the camera body uh, there are six uh, threaded holes on the camera body. Those six holes can be used to attach either the external filter wheel right. or the base on which the adapter 
tiltable adapter are attached. So the tiltable adapter is either directly on external filter wheel or on some base which is attached instead of filter wheel on a, on a camera. If you remove the base, uh, you can you can always uh, use those six uh, six uh, those I mean those six thread holes to attach anything you want to the, to the camera. Nice. But this is the how, how the tiltable adapter looks like when it's removed from the from the camera. Got it. And I believe uh, when we uh, check the C5 camera product page, then in the mechanical specification, yeah, here it is. Yeah, this image shows uh, the, the the six six holes, threaded holes on the on the camera body. Those holes are used to attach uh, the adapter or the filter wheel yeah nice well that's 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 great i mean i i love these cameras and from what pete has been telling because pete's the one of the group that has um the most experience uh you know touching and feeling the, the build quality of um of the moravian he doesn't say you know he, he doesn't say anything bad about it, it just says everything how, how great the build quality is of, of your cameras so so that's uh kudos to you over there at moravian because it means a lot then you know it's, when when you're when you're looking for a camera it's kind of like what, what were we talking about pete you know you, you you're getting a you're getting a porsche and you're getting really bad tires and putting it on a porsche you know so yeah. Yeah, basically what it is is that if you're spending a high dollar volume on a nice high precision mount, a very nice scope, why then do we want to go cheap on the optical train? It doesn't yeah. make sense because, I mean, it's like getting cheap tires on a Porsche or a Ferrari. You know, my goodness gracious, if you're going to go all the way through, just go all the way through right from beginning to the end, you know, yeah. because you're absolutely Agreed. right. And, and I and I love the build quality of these Moravian cameras. And, and Pavel, you know, I've been emailing you over the last couple of years. You've got the right pixel size for the image scale that's needed for these high yep. CDK, you know, 14, 17s, and 20 uh, in scopes. It, it's just amazing that you're the only one really right now that has that capability. That's definitely a prosumer camera that is yeah. really within the, the price range. And that's good too yeah. because it is a very very comparable price. Yeah, and you and you hit on it right there, Pete. When you when you gave that name, the prosumer, this is what I I think this is. You know, Moravian, um, and and you know, and Plain Wave, the CDKs. When we're time when we talk about, um, and we've had questions about what type of scope would you select or what this type of camera, you know, be well matched with. It is those larger, probably the more well-known prosumer CDKs, the 14s, the 17s, the 21s, um, that this would be a match for. Um, it versus, you know, and I'll be honest with you, like for me, the get started backyard observer, you know, this is not the right match because we want to match the right equipment together. That's oh. our main, that's the way we always talk about is matching the right pieces of equipment together because what do you always say? Buy once, cry once, right? So yep. Moravian with a CDK or maybe an, um, or of the like, and you've got a great, you know, observatory grade mount like the plane waves you know the l um 350s those these types of systems that this is the match you know when people are asking what does this work for here i'm telling you right now this is the match okay. and if you don't if you don't ask me pete can tell you right there this is the match the, okay. this is the uh the setup just don't forget the the c1s the c2s and the c3s 
because you know the, those yeah, are true. those are the five thirty threes, and those are the ones that are out there. The, those those cameras are right in that price range of that yes. you know you, that ZWO high end sixty two hundred full frame cameras. Are, They're in the same price range. So don't you know you know. For those of you that are out there and seeing, okay, yeah, you know, we all see the C5. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's the it's the biggest it's one on the lot, right? We see it, you know, and that's what we, that, you know, and it's a ten thousand plus camera. So, so you know, don't don't forget the other part part of the lines here because you know if you want a superior build with great camera and great support, you know, that's what you know that's what you're paying for, and you're right in that price range. You're right in that area with the with those. Uh, the C one X's. I mean, you're right there. Yes. And, and to go with that right too is 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 what Pavel. What we initially talked about is is that on the Moravian website on the download and Pavel chime in anytime, please. They have what they call their scientific imaging and processing software. It's a free software. It's called SIPS. And believe me, if you like Nina, you're going to absolutely enjoy SIPS. And from what Pavel is saying, Pavel, I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'll let you talk about what, what might be coming up here in the summertime with the next version of SIPS. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tra uh, trade secrets. Uh -huh. Trade secrets. <laughs> no, no. no, no. Uh, honestly, I'm a little bit nervous when I, when I have to introduce uh, SIPS version 4 uh, simply because uh you know in the history history of computing uh and i am in, in computing from the very very beginning from the 8-bit computers uh every new upgrade of user interface was acknowledged with the uh, uh with the positive feedback from users like you introduce many then you have toolbar and the first upgrade of uh of uh, user interface which uh was received with a mixed mixed uh, feelings was uh, ribbons and we rework SIPS version four to use kind of ribbons not not ribbons like Microsoft in Office <laughs> but but uh, the the uh, the user interface is is a uh, is a similar uh, I believe it's much more much more uh, configurable uh, but. Uh, this is only the this is only the, the front end of of uh, of, uh, of the software, uh, but the SIPS version four uh, SIPS version four uh, has two uh, most important new features. The one feature is a, it is scriptable. That means uh, there is a program tool and you can write programs within the environment of SIPS, and the target. Our target, uh, our goal is to to uh, offer full functionality uh, of of uh, of the SIPs to the program. So you can script the entire session, including searching for opening the dome, synchronizing telescope, and everything. And another another important feature is uh, the ability to access SIPs uh, through a web browser. Uh, so you can run the SIPs on a computer close to the, to the telescope or possibly mounted on a telescope. And then to use any web browser to access SIPs and to control observation, to take images, download images, and control the mount and, and everything. Uh, I have the development version of SIPS uh, here, so I could possibly show you how, how the version 4 looks like. Uh, but um, <laughs> only a brief introduction of SIPS would, would probably need a long, long, long time. So it's, it's uh, uh, I'm not sure if, it, if it's appropriate to do it to do it just just now. Uh, you. But what 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 I want to emphasize is that uh, the 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 SIPS really it means scientific image processing system. <laughs> uh, when we first when we first started to develop and SIPS, uh, it began that we 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 uh, 
developed the first CCD-based camera. It used the KAF uh, uh, 0400 sensor, the very, very popular, used also in ST7, SBIC, and so on. And we need to, to, uh, to check, to, to, to judge what the camera actually returns, the image. So we have to write a simple software which uh, is, is capable to read the camera and, and show the image. This is the beginning. It, it, it was named SIMS, like Simple Image Manipulation System. But uh, then we were noticed that there already exists a program called SIMS. It's a game, computer yep. game. So <laughs> the name yeah. Yeah. Electronic Arts SIMS. might have been a little bit upset with you if you would have kept it at SIMS. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, it, it, uh, so SIMS, well, uh, the version one was SIMS and the version two was was renamed to, to SIMS. Uh, but I, I want to emphasize that uh, 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 there is very uh, powerful tool for photometry. Maybe um, the, the SIPS is um, designed for, for acquiring controlling camera and telescopes and everything, focusers, filter wheels, uh, but also to process images, but we do not intend to compete with with uh, uh, with uh, software design to to process um, uh, astro images astro photographs i mean but the the strong uh, feature the the city is strong in in a research processing in photometry so for people uh, observing variable stars or exoplanet transits and and so on so for this kind of of uh, image processing uh, SIPS includes very powerful tools to, to do uh, the, the scientific image reduction and, 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 and photometry analysis, yeah. Nice. Well, well we had one comment, um, I think Mark was mentioning, yeah, we may like to have you back on, you know, to show us SIPS at a, you know, we can dedicate a bit more time. Yeah to sip so we can actually see that you know versus at, a, at another date so if you wouldn't mind coming back at a later date you know and showing us sips i think that would be really advantageous for our viewer membership here because we've been getting we're asking we've got some interest here <laughs> it seems yeah uh if, if there is interest uh i would really love to show you sips yeah because I am a principal developer and also user. Okay. And that 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 I really would welcome the possibility to, to show what the software what the software does and and uh, what can do for 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 observer. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. It, it is a good software. I'm very, very impressed with it. And, and I'd recommend that, I mean, if people are used to Nina, then then definitely um, SIPS is a very good program that you'll definitely be able to uh, cross-reference very, very quickly. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I know about Nina. Uh, I've seen this, this software a, a couple of times, but I have no experience with it because I'm, yeah. Of course, if I use my, uh, my, my telescope, I, I control it with tips, uh, of course, yeah, including a, a dome and focuser and, and, and everything. So, so, but, but uh, of course, I'm really glad to hear, uh, hear that, that um, people like SIPS because um, uh, the, the feedback is often that SIPS is very complex. It's too complex. It's, it's too, uh, people say, yeah, it's too complicated. But on the other side, SIPS is evolved based on the user request. So everything in SIPS uh, was requested by some user. And we mm -hmm. only take care not to put it like sparrow nests, but but to to organize it, to to make it symmetrical and and uh, and keep the keep the overall functionality, uh, some regular symmetrical and, and so on. So uh, makes sense. Uh, well, <laughs> one. Uh, uh, SIPS version two and version three, you use image sets. That's the way how to organize multiple images. If you calibrate images, you just have to put it in sets. 
and uh, I, I was uh, I was notified that uh, the word set can can uh, have some uh, some negative sound to some people. So in in version four, I, I uh, functionality is exactly the same, but instead of image set, there is an image list. So, also, so this is the, the one, one change. Everything is the same exactly, uh, but but it's name list. In fact, it's, it's image list. Yeah, maybe it's, okay. it's more more. Um, I, I I learned something new today. I didn't think the word set was uh, an issue. So so yeah. Uh, maybe it has something to do with uh, uh, learning math in 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 um, elementary school where the sets are are. Uh, but maybe it's all that was too long ago for me. I don't remember. <laughs> well, we have a guest on that I'd like to introduce everybody to. His name is Wes Harrington. Wes has a CDK20 that he's actually building a uh, remote observatory for. Is he, the, he, is he, he is in the chat? Getting, he's in the chat right now. Oh, okay. and he's been listening. So do you remember that Rotarian that the gentleman had from Belgium? Remember yep. that little four point Rotarian camera? Yep. Well, Wes had bought that. And then what we're doing, Pavel, is we're getting a C4 camera to go with it. And it's going to be on his optical train. And it's going to be a very, very unique optical train to design it. Uh, I, I tell you what, Wes, if you're listening, we're going to have to get some images of this because Pavel, when you see this, I think you're going to be impressed with what we're going to do on this thing because it really is a very, very unique optical train. So what we've got is we've got the back of the CDK20. We've got the integrated rotating focus of the IRF90. And then we've got a couple of, uh, we've got a, uh, an Optex Sagita. And then we've got a SBIG AFW filter wheel. It's a 10-port dual filter wheel assembly. Then we got the Rotarian. And then we got the C4 camera. So we're going to put this whole optical train together. It's just going to be one of the most unique optical trains put together. So oh, I want I want to see pictures of that. I want to see pictures of that. I want I want to see, see, want, I, I want to see the Rotarian move too. I want to see that thing go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wes, if you're on, please, if you've got any he's questions, he's on. He's in the chat. He yeah, said he he's is. here. He's in the chat. Oh, good, good. But yeah, it's it's going to be quite the, uh, the, the 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 setup because that Rotarian is going to be real interesting. Yeah. And uh, we saw it there at, at Neef. It, it was kind of an interesting setup, so it's going to be quite quite something different. Yeah. It's gonna it's yeah, definitely gonna like, be fun to do. Like, I hope that, it works. He's like he's like this. Please <laughs> let it work. <laughs> you know. No. And listen, Wes, you're in good hands with Pete. You know, it's like he's like all state. So. So. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was good to meet. I met I met Wes for a quick second at Neve. So nice to see you again, yeah. Wes. Exactly. Pavel, you're gonna have to definitely come over for either the next Neve or maybe the next um, AIC, which is maybe going to be in San Jose um, next year. I don't know what it is, but you've got to definitely come over and actually have your your cameras because they are really something that you need. To kind of come over and, and and present to the american public yeah absolutely the, the, you are right uh we we thought about being at neve this year but i believe it was in april yes or yes. yeah it, it was it was in april and uh you know you know it, a lot of lot of things has to be done, and it was too late to 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 come. But if, if I start planning uh, soon enough, then, then uh, yeah, it, it would be really really. Uh, I believe it's a good idea to be to be there. It's not easy to to move the some dummy cameras or everything over the ocean, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But it, it could be managed some, some different. Oh way, yeah, you can ship. You know, you could ship them right on over, and they, they'll put it in the yeah. warehouse. So I mean, you know, a lot of lot of lot of people like the, even the Prima Luce guys, and they they ship all their stuff over. Um, you know, many people ship stuff over, and they they have a warehousing thing where under security and everything. So 
So uh, that, that's yeah. it's never been a problem so far. We, we actually had our own table, Astroworld had our own table at Neef um, and uh, had a really good turnout. It was really wonderful seeing all the fans and everything come and hang out and stuff like that. But this year, this year, in 2024, I, I've made a decision. We're going to have two tables um, and we're going to have two tables side by side. And I don't know if you know this, Pavel, but but uh, I've opened up a, a Astro retail shop online. Um, we have Skywatcher, Prima Luce, um, Play One cameras, uh, Teleview. I mean, we have a whole bunch of stuff on there, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So we just opened up the store uh, <laughs> at Neef, I think, really. Um, yeah, but uh, Pretty much. But um, it's yeah. it's a lot of fun. We did a lot of giveaways and stuff like that. And I still have, I still, I still got. We're gonna do this on Wednesday night. I still have this guy. This is. There you go. I still have it. This is this is the Astro World. Uh oh, what happened? Uh oh, it, it, it's the closet of death is going down. It's going down. <laughs> the closet of death is going down, and it's the closet of death is dying, and and there you go. So so this is where. This is where, um, like, precise parts adapters that you don't use anymore and everything, it ends up in something like this in somebody's closet with shelves, like I have right over here, where things just go to die. So, <laughs> so you know, or, or get sold on cloudy nights, one or the other. <laughs> so, But that's going to be given away. We're going to give this away uh, Wednesday. Because nobody won it at Neve. I tried to give it away at Neve. Nobody, nobody won it. Whoever had the ticket never hey, showed up. Pavel, just just a quick question to ask you, and this is going to be for Wes as well. If we wanted to remove the M sixty eight adapter from the C four camera, what is the four those four bolt holes? What are those? Are those M four M three? Yeah. Uh, those are M3, uh, 52 millimeters apart. So this is the uh, the the this is the standard we use uh, for for a long time. The C2 and C3 cameras have four M3 holes, 44 millimeters apart, uh, and uh, C4 camera has four m3 holes 52 millimeters apart and the, then we have to change it uh, for c5 we use six bolts instead of four because of the heavier heavier yep, body the weight and, sure uh, yeah so the there are six m3 holes uh, uh and not, not in the corners of a square but uh, around around the circle yeah nice yeah then yeah, Eric's got his puppy behind him. <laughs> oh yeah, Titan, he's right here. Yeah. So so what's so what's next for Moravian? What's in, is there anything yeah. on the horizon for for Moravian that you could <laughs> yeah. Can, yeah. that you could that uh, you could say? I know you got plenty of stuff in the works, but you know I don't want to <laughs> uh, you know just uh, wonder yeah. what's up next for you. I already mentioned the. Uh, standalone filter wheels that means filter wheels which could be used also with other cameras not only with Moravian cameras but also with other cameras because those filter wheels will have a standalone power line and USB line to control and possibly serial line or Ethernet line the new controller handles or Ethernet uh, serial line and, and USB line as well uh, then we plan to uh, to introduce update of the C2, C3, C4 lines with a possibility to connect a GPS receiver too. So uh, also other lines will be able to to um, connect to GPS receiver. For for imaging, it's it's a uh, there's no use for GPS receiver because you just have to accumulate enough. Uh, for instance, for, for uh, oculation, for, for uh, people who observe the um, transit of, of 
asteroids in, in front of some star or, or their precise timing is, is crucial. So the GPS receiver is a big, big, big plus. And a lot of cameras are also used not to, to observe stars or planets, but to observe uh, satellites and, uh, and space debris and, uh, and this kind <laughs> of stuff. And those cameras are, uh, they also need to, to calculate the uh, astrometry, precise position of, of satellites, and they need to know very, very precise time. So that's, that's why the, the GPS is, is present. And the plus side is that if uh, you need a geographical location, then the GPS naturally provides uh, uh, coordinates. Sure. Uh, another another um, maybe distant future is a uh, camera with a GSense 6060 sensor. Uh, this is a big brother of, of uh, 4040 sensor. Uh, it's six by six centimeters. Uh, I believe the pixel size is 10 microns. Wow, so that's really, really, really a huge piece of, of silicon. Um, that, that's for the big telescopes. For you know, the, the Austrian ASA, you know, that they manufacture up to two and a half meter telescope. And for yep. the, this size of telescope, the large sensor with large pixels is, is necessary. Uh, so, I did have a quick question here. Um, I'm looking on your website, and I do see the um, the C1X 20, uh, 2600, which is using the IMX 571. Uh, yeah. Are you planning on? And I'm and I apologize if you mentioned this before, but are you planning on u utilizing the 533 sensor at all? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe I already mentioned it. It's built in the yeah. new C2 9000 camera. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so this is this uh, this is not in C3 or C1X. It is in a C2 body for now. Yeah, maybe okay. we maybe we introduce it also in a C1X body. That means the symmetrical body, not not the asymmetrical like C2. Uh, but currently the camera is already available and uh, and it's in the, it's in the hands of testers. Uh, we are getting feedback from the camera, and, uh, and it's it, it should be it should be delivered within a week or two from now. Nice. Yeah, so it, nice. awesome. Well, we got we got a really good question from uh, Captain Rescue too. Um, now, just recently that we seen the I guess um, I, I guess not not a resurgence, but um, I guess. Uh, Another camera has come out with a uh, onboard guide chip, as uh, right above. Uh, I mean, the S Big used to have the onboard guiding uh, cameras. They have a cam guiding chip in the camera body. Um, what are your thoughts uh, on this type of design? And does Moravian have any plans on doing something like that? Uh, if I am not mistaken, I believe uh, <clears throat> there is a, a patent for for the a guiding chip inside the camera. But uh, I mm, I personally mm, I I'm not sure if if it's a good idea. Uh, the main reason is uh, is filter because thank you, you thank you thank you <laughs> filter. In front of, of imaging sensor, you filter also the light to the guided chip, and that's that's the very very big problem. Uh, maybe uh, especially if it's narrow band filter, yeah, or or, yes. or some yes. very narrow narrow band, or, or uh, research research uh, application often use uh, ultraviolet filter, and you have really problems to to see Vega through the through this filter. <laughs> Really, uh, really dark, dark, dark filter, uh, and so the using of such filter, in fact, it eliminates possibility of guiding. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, and yes. no, go ahead. And go ahead. what's more, uh, the if you if you use Ophaxis guider, you have exactly the, the same functionality, like if you put another sensor inside the camera uh but 
you have a, a choice of of the guy in camera. You can choose camera with small sensor or bigger sensor or or, or yeah. whatever. Uh, yes. uh, and if the if you cannot find the star on on of axis guide the mirror, then you can remove the guide camera and put it on standalone telescope. Yeah. So yeah. the flexibility is is, is uh, another plus of of uh, keeping the guider and uh, and uh, imaging camera uh, separate. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've been going back and forth on this uh, on the show since, I, I guess, probably since like March. Um, and, you know, and, and, and I've been trying to get an answer from, from I, I, I mean, I, I've seen them before. I saw S Big had one a long, long time ago. Um, and I know that, you know, ZWO has just come out with one recently. Um, and, you know, I try and get an answer for the question. Well, what about, you know, what about the filter problem? Well, I want to put, I, I, I'm from Long Island. I'm in Bortal 8 or, or worse. I said, I'm pretty much stuck to narrowband. So what, how, how does that work like that? And I didn't get an answer. So, um, I'm, I'm waiting to hear answers on that, on the, uh, on the, uh, the, 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 the recommended way to do imaging with that uh but um we'll, we'll see as more information comes out so well yeah. the fraction limited has what they call their star chaser and this is one of the issues that wes and i have been going through is that we, we needed to go with their particular afw filter wheel which is their two carousel filter wheel and they've got their star chaser and basically their star chaser is is kind of like what you said dan it's kind of their, um, they, they don't call it a pick-off prism, but it's a, a pick, mirror. Pick-off, oh, okay, mirror, okay. Like a mirror, but, but it's 15 millimeters wide. So it's kind of got a, a large, um, it's got a large surface area, which is kind of nice. But but I'm, they, 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 but they've got the, they got the camera already in, in, as part of this star chaser. So it's not like you get a lipstick guide camera, like say a ZWO 174 mini. It's already got right. the guide camera in there. And then you can kind of rotate or you can move that camera up and down. It, it, it's it got a pull out maximum distance of three inches. So definitely, you know, when we look at OAG, you've got to have distance A equals distance B to be able to get focus for your primary camera as well. So I'm not really kind of sold on it, but this is going to be interesting how we get this thing looking with what Wes wants to go with. But I think now that Pavel, you've answered the question, we're, we're really limited by back focus distance on his CDK20. But since we can take off that M68 adapter, we can definitely save up some spacing now, and that's going to actually help us out. So I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. So you've answered your yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. One other question that I have is looking at a lot of, you know, the cameras, um, especially in your situation, Pete, but I'm just looking, you know, that's quite a long focal length camera. And um, I should say scope. The guide cameras that you currently have to deal with the longer focal length um telescopes what would you recommend for the type of you know for the current guy cameras that moravian has what would you recommend a certain type of guide camera to pair with a long focal length telescope um say over uh 14 000 millimeter focal length or anything like that it, it's not um, really the guide camera. It's the pickoff prism. It's the size of the pickoff prism. You want to go the with a large okay. pickoff prism because you got to have that real estate. Yep. And then when you go with like a 12 and a half by 12 and a half pickoff prism, you've got to get a guide camera sensor that has a lot of real estate. Case in point, it would be like the ZWO 174 Mini yep. or maybe the uh, Lodestar X, the X2. Lodestar Pro. Yeah, well, the X2 is discontinued. So oh, yeah, I'm sorry, the Pro. You're right, yes. Yeah, but what I'm thinking is, is okay, so if you're talking about the prism and the pickup prism is like a 12 millimeter, it does your off-axis guider, is that one? Because I was looking here at the website and I haven't had a chance to look at the off-axis guider yet. Is that a pickoff prism of about that 12 millimeter 
the 12 by 12 size? Is it about that large or is it larger? I'm just kind of curious to help with dealing with these, you know, that longer focal length in the situations that, we're, that you know, like some of us come across. Uh, uh, yeah, the the mirror is 10 millimeter wide in our Foxes guiders only. That means uh, uh, the um, lock, the greatest sensor which is useful on a Foxes guider is the two third, uh, two third form. That, that's okay. Maybe eight millimeter diagonal or so. Uh, okay. That means uh, because. Uh, there is not uh, when, when we think about guided camera and long form focal length, we do not uh, we we cannot uh, choose the pixel size because those sensors always have pixel size around three yep. microns or, yep. or so the three and or between three and four microns and and. Uh, uh, so if the focal length is is uh, really really long, then you have to bin pixels even on, on a guide. And if you have a, a guiding camera on a standalone telescope, you can choose camera with a great big sensor and uh, to, to make searching for for some guiding star e easier. But if you have a camera on a Vaxis guider, that it, it, it was not it was mentioned here, yeah. Uh, using a 12 megapixel guider is useless because the the mirror will will cover only a small fraction of the of the sensor. So in the, in the, in our line, the C1 5000 is the greatest camera which is useful on a Foxis guider. Yeah, but SIPS uh, mm, offers and it it offers it for a very long time and and people are not aware of it. Uh, the SIPS offers uh, automatic guiding too, so it can read camera and guide the guide mount, and it can guide the mount not only uh, according to one selected star, but also uh, based on the plate solution. solution. So you uh, SIPS can find all stars within the field of view of guide the camera and match it with all stars on on a, on a reference image. And make the correction based on average of of, uh, of x and y axis shift of, of all stars. So uh, the oh. guiding can be very precise, even if the focal line is not that that that, uh, that long. Uh, so even if the standalone guided telescope with a shorter focal line, you can still have a very very precise guide. Nice. And uh, SIPs also have one more feature uh, for users with uh, uh, mounts which can uh, keep the um, star uh, on a pinpoint star uh, during one exposure. The SIPs have inter image guiding feature. So you can uh, just download the image from mm -hmm. main imaging camera and compare it with a, a reference image taken when you turn off the, the inter-image guiding and very, very slightly shift the mount and then start uh, another another uh, another image. This is useful, for, uh, again, if you use, uh, for instance, 10 minutes or 20 minutes long exposures for narrow band, it, it, there is no mount which can which can perfectly track for 20 minutes, I believe. But right. if you use, say, a uh, two-minute exposure or something like this, a lot of mounts can can uh, handle uh, two minutes without pointing uh, and without uh, any negative effect on star quality. And SIPS then only corrects some long-time uh, image image uh, movement over the field of view caused by refraction or or, or whatever. So this is also a capability of, of, of SIPS to do inter-image inter guiding without guided camera at all. But but you you have to have a good mount to to. Um, That's good to know. That's really good to know. With with the advent now of these uh, wave strain harmonic drive mounts, and with SIPS. I know that you've got the choice to use the ASCOM driver specific for these harmonic drive mounts. 
Um, are, are these going to be recognized within SIPs here um, with like version four? Because everybody likes the portability aspect of these harmonic drive mounts. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Uh, well, SIPs support uh, ESCOM drivers, of yeah. course. So if there is an ESCOM so driver, yeah, if there is ESCOM drivers, just choose ESCOM. SIP supports uh, ESCOM standard. You can have ESCOM camera, ESCOM mount, ESCOM dome, ESCOM flaps, and, and everything. So uh, uh, the, uh, even the ESCOM uh, uh, some some rain sensor or, or or something like this. So um, we we uh, yeah SIPs uh, SIPs accepts. ASCOM drivers for all devices, from cameras to mounts to everything else. Yeah. Nice. I'm actually, okay. I'm really intrigued with this. And Pete, I'm, I, I want to say thanks, you know, for having Pebble on because I had no idea about SIPs, but I'm kind of intrigued about the software for myself personally. So I'm actually going to download this to my little Melee PC and you know, next Clear Sky we get, I want to give it a spin. Yeah, I'd yeah, like to just yeah. personally just give it a spin and give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, and as I said, any feedback is appreciated. So, <laughs> well, I, I I got my Eagle Five still wrapped up in the box. I haven't even taken it out yet. So maybe I'll throw it on there and uh, see what we got. You know, because yeah. I got three mounts in the backyard, so I'll throw it up on one of them and see. Yeah, and I yeah, definitely. I'd love to, you know, like I say, I want it, you know, I'm learning new software, you know, to move away from maybe, you know, the ASI Air. So I'd like to give this a try, you know, something new to try. I'm always yeah. up for, for new for new stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Currently available is only version three. It's kind of outdated because version four is an alpha version. It's it's also possible to download the alpha version that you can uh, yeah, it's a bit confusing because you go to the beta version folder and download alpha version of, of new SIPs, but, but uh, <laughs> there will be a first beta will be will be out pretty soon. Within, I believe within a week or two. And uh, but but the final final uh, release date of version four, I hope I hope this summer, but. We will see how, how it, it yeah, depends. You know, you know, so software could be uh, kind of scary sometimes. <laughs> you know, it'll, yeah. you know it'll, it'll work one day, and all of a sudden, that's, well, we got to figure out what bug that's from. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. So it's it's all about troubleshooting. It's all about getting out into the into some of the users that that actually know what they're doing, and you know. You got to get the people that try and break stuff. You know what I mean? So, you know, what happens if I do this? Okay. You know, what happens if I do that? And just not just do a regular sequence, you know, even though that's part of it, but see what happens because you know what? Some people out there just like to play around and hit buttons. And, you know, you got to have that same type of mentality when you're, um, when you're troubleshooting, whether it's your mount or software, you got to, you got to think every single type of contingency of what would happen <laughs> and and get it fixed you know it's it's a very useful to have such people among testers yeah that's, yeah. that's <laughs> absolutely absolutely you you, you right. must have somebody that knows how to break stuff hey listen you know me and eric talk about it all the time we were doing computer repair back to well like five and a quarter inch floppy drives you know so so we were sitting there playing with that. Now I, I would take it apart, and I'd look at it. And when I'm done putting it back together and it works, I got like a, you know four or five screws or so in my hand that I don't kind of know. Well, you know it yeah. works, <laughs> so we don't need those. Nope. <laughs> so yeah. But let's awesome. see. Yeah. What I'm else we got in the chat? Any, anything? In, oh, Eric's chatting away in the chat. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, we, but we, no, we I it. it looks like we peaked at about 40 people on the live show. So uh that that's pretty good. Look, look looking pretty good for the live show. And uh let's see. Um we do have a couple of giveaways, right? Don't I think we gotta do that. We gotta do yep. picture of the month. Yep. 
I don't know if you know this, Pavel. We do uh we do picture of the week, and our members um submit their pictures and they get voted on by their peers. Um, and we do I do we do a picture of the week every week, and at the end of the month, we do a picture of the month. Whoever wins picture of the month goes in the Astroworld. I don't think I have them with me. No, I, uh, yeah, I do. I have last year's calendar here. Um, this is last year's calendar, and th and they get um, put into a calendar, and every picture of the month is hosted in the calendar. So yeah, so uh, so that's what we do. So so we uh, do uh, you know we start in December so we can get the calendar out on time, um, and then uh, we sit there and we and we do we do lots of stuff. So we do that. So we do that once a week. Um, it's all on the website, and then uh, after that, we do a uh, we do a little bit of a giveaway for the um, Masters of Pix Insight class. And is that it? Am I missing something? Yeah, no. It, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. But that's not it because we've got you know some awesome guests. We've got Pavel here from yeah. Arabian, and I only see twenty six likes. Oh, it's twenty seven now. I only say 20, 27, really? 27, 27. And we had 32 watching. Yeah, something's not right we there. Had, we had 40 watching. You know, so I'm just saying. 28. All know. right, come on, guys. Come on now. I mean, you guys are going to get, you guys gonna get you have to be in trouble. I'm just someone's, letting you guys know. Someone's going to log off and make it to uh, 33. <laughs> Was taking time out. It's one. It's two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, and he's taking time out to do <laughs> this stuff for us. And you guys don't give us a like. Come on. There we go. We got thirty-two for thirty-two. There we go. <laughs> Man, you, you know it don't happen unless you don't ask. You know, you know, you gotta ask. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I'll, I'll go get tight and I'll go get the pit bull on you guys. Come on. Um, oh, geez, <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable but yeah so all right so i guess uh you want you want you want to take a look at the pictures real quick we can take, take yeah let's take a look let's let's let's, ta let's 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 take a look at these pictures let's see you know what our what our esteemed you know audience and viewer membership have given us you uh, know we'll do, let's see display two there we go and where did Pavel go? What happened to Pavel? He's, he did you put him behind me? Or I, you think, put him behind I think he's Pete? behind Pete. I bet he's behind Pete. Don't do that to Pavel. Put him, you know, you got to give him his yep. own space here. No. Not behind Pete. Where is he? Oh, you know, I see what happened. happened. I got you, Pavel. Give me one second. All right. I see what happened. We'll get... Jesse out of there because Jesse's not there. There you go. And guest and edit. And there, there we go. go. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. Okay. So this is our website here. And it's uh, you're gonna have to excuse the slowness of the loading because some of these pictures are really, really um really large files. Hi, so um Hi, so our last picture of the week, um, we had a tie. So we got May 5th was Dave Schaefer's uh, M106 and uh, Jason's uh, M13. So nice job to you guys. Uh, that's our last picture of the month for March, for Ryan March. Nebula. So nice job with that. That was done, what is this done? With an ASI 294 on an AT72. So small scope, really nice, nice detail in the in the clouds. So that's why it won. So this is the current pictures of the week. So here we go. Dave Shavers, I'm gonna call it the flaming skull again because this one it really, is. this one really looks like the skull, you know. So this one, it's the rosette. It's not the rosette to me anymore. No, Thanks, no. You know, so again, you got, thank you to Tegan for putting this into my head and it'll never be the rosette nebula for me ever again. This is the skull nebula. So, so, pa so Pavel, what would, do, do, do you see the skull? Cause you look like you're a little confused. 
uh, 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 I see rosette, yeah, only. I don't see the skull. Okay, so <laughs> we'll, we'll point it out to you. Here you go. So, so here is an eye socket. Here is another eye socket. There's the nose. There's the mouth, and there's the head. Now I, now I can. See it. <laughs> and you will never unsee it. You'll never again. look at the same way Trust again. Me. You'll never look at it the uh, same yeah. way again. <laughs> kind of scary, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a little, little odd looking, but you know. Um, and then we got um, the uh, the flaming star and the tadpoles. That was uh, Josh Kovac. That was done with the Red Cat and MBZ. Very nicely done. Very nice. Then you got Mark Ellis's M51. This is done with his, was it CDK12 and his L350 out in Arizona somewhere. So yeah, he just put down no stats. I, st I still think he bleached it a little bit. Sorry, Mark. I, I hate to tell you. It looks a little bleached. I don't know. A little bit on the one needs a little bit more blue needs a little bit more blue to me but you know that's that's okay beautiful beautiful job on the dust lanes nice job and then you got um who, i don't know who the name of this is but it, this is the uh, uh altair 60 wide field of the iris great job with the Very with nice. the with the cloud and the dust all around it's beautiful so we had only 26 votes this week we usually over over eighty or ninety, and I don't know. I think everybody's still on on Neef hangover. I think I'm gonna blame it on that. But um, you know, twenty six people, and you know what? Nine of those people came tonight on the show because it was seventeen when we started the show, so it was pretty low. So for you discard users, for for your your if you follow us on Facebook, you follow us on YouTube, whatever, please. Log in on Mondays or Tuesday mornings, and the voting starts on Tuesdays. All right, and Pete's watching. Pete's watching the game. He's like, I can't do it no more. <laughs> but, but, um, but so here we go. So let's take a look and see who won picture of the week. And, and where did I put my all polls? Here we go. And picture of the week ending May twelfth, twenty seven votes now. And the winner is da, 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 the Rosette slash Flaming Skull with 12 votes. So there we go. So followed there by the um, the Iris with seven votes. Right. Mark Ellis is M51 with four, and Josh Kovac with three. So so nice job uh, to uh, Dave again. So beautiful job, man. Congrats, 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 congrats. Absolutely. All right. So now we've got what the L Extreme? No, no, we're not doing that. Uh, did we say we were doing that tonight? I thought oh, we wait. did say that. We said we were going to do yeah. that tonight, and it was only people that were watching the show, right? Now he's going to write the number yeah. on the back, right? Because we didn't yeah. want to, we didn't want to give it away. Here it is. Two inch L extreme from Optalong, right there. Okay, so we're gonna do this right now, and I'm gonna write the number down. Okay, and I know you got to be fast on the trigger, guys. So we're watching the chat. We're watching the chat. Don't you can't no. Don't put your numbers down yet until I say go. All right, and here we go. So I'm gonna put a number from one. To what we got, we got 30 people watching, so we'll do one to 30. How about that? All right, there you go. so I'm gonna put the number down here and go. No, Dave, nice work. No, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> I love doing this, people doing the same number. Nothing yet, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Oh my goodness. Oh, stop. Terry Martin. Number 12. Number 12. Terry Martin. Terry Number is. 12. Congrats, Terry. Terry Martin. Send me an email at Dan. I'll put it in here. Dan at astroworldweb.com. 
gmail.com and send me your your address and I'll put this in the mail for you. So Christmas comes early to Terry. There you, there you go. go. Congratulations. You just won Nicely a three hundred dollar filter. There you go. Merry Christmas. There you go. Nicely done. Cheers on that. Fifty five. Right. It's one to thirty. Dan, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's been hitting the wine, but yeah, I know. And um, oh, he said twenty five. He went back to twenty five. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> I know. But hey, anyway, Norm, it's all. It's over. It's over, Norm. You can't hit 12 now. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked I, I looked back and Terry Martin was the winner at 12. So, That's so. It. That's it. All right. <laughs> Anything else? Sorry, Norm. Sorry, Newman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, hey, um really great show. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The Leafs tied it up in the third. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Oh. I guess they just I just I guess they just called. Oh baby. Did they Oh god. I love it. Is that 3? So a hockey fan from Toronto. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. All right then. Is that 3 or is that 2-2? Two, two? Two two man, we go to OT now. Oh, you're you're far behind. I've had that on my phone for like a minute. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I said I, I said they tied it up two two before you got up. <laughs> I know because that was just it. It just damn, got in there. Damn West Coast people, they're always behind. Oh, that's so, amazing. Um, awesome. Well, well, Pavel, thank you. So I know Pavel, it's late over you. by you, and I want to say uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming on and and spending some some time with us and hanging out with us and teaching us a lot about your camera line. And I know a lot of people um, are fans that were in the chat. I know Mark Alice is, is, is drooling at the, you know, get one, he wants to put something on the back of his CDK. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so, but th thank you so much for coming on and, and hanging out with us. It means a lot. Thanks. It was my pleasure to be here with you virtually with you but uh, yeah yeah it was a great <laughs> thank you thank you for inviting me and uh, maybe if, if uh sometime in the future you want to talk about six probably when the venture four is out yeah <laughs> so yeah. And, and if you want we've done this before we've done uh like saturday shows for our our guests from europe that we could do during the day that's not you know yeah. three o'clock in the morning <laughs> you know so yeah. So we can um, definitely be flexible for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we've, we've done it for many guests before, uh, that, that, you know, it's just, you know, we, we all have lives. So, so, but you know, just, uh, staying up all night sometimes is, uh, is not good for the, you know, the little internal clock sometimes, even though that's part of what we do. Uh, yeah, it, it is not. After all, we are astronomers, so yep. we, we used to stay awake in the night. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. But, um, we do. We usually do a, a final thoughts, and I know Pete's final thought. Pete's ready to go because he's got three minutes left in the game. He wants to go catch the end of the game. But we'll do Pete first, so he can get out of here. So, Pete, final thought. Pavel, sincerely, uh, an appreciation for taking the time to come on the show. I've always been a proponent of your cameras, and thank you for coming on as being a guest. And definitely, um, with SIPS4, I look forward to it because it is a great, great, great software, and I highly recommend it. So thank you for taking the time, and look forward to having you come back on here in a month or so. Yeah. Okay. It was my pleasure, Again, really. All right. All right, okay. everybody. Well, well, thank you again, and don't forget, um, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we got Wednesday night, we got uh, Warren Keller coming on to do part two of his uh, M51 workflow. You're not going to want to miss that. Um, Eric, do you have anything, final thought you want to you say? No, no. Again, Pavel, thank you so much. Um, and again, everybody, thank you for your continued support of the show and Astral World. Um, we really appreciate that. Um, and have a great, great weekend. Be safe. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms oh, here yeah. in the U.S. Totally happy forgot Mother's about that. Day. So, and around the world, happy Mother's Day to everyone, um, to all the moms out there. So, um, we couldn't we couldn't be here without you. That's for sure.
<laughs> yep, absolutely. And uh, why is work calling me at 10 o'clock at night? But uh, oh. yeah, it's not real work. They, they call me from the Philippines. But um, all right, Pavel, do you, would you like to have some final thoughts? Would you like to? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a great experience for me. Yeah, uh, my, my um, probably it could be difficult to understand my English, but it's only second language, and and uh, ho hopefully you 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 could understand a lot more important things. And uh, I, I it was really great. I'm really happy that I could introduce our company and our cameras because we love astronomy. We do astronomy. We do it for for astronomers and. If we do not love astronomy, we could hardly do such uh, do such things for a living. We would choose something different. But <laughs> so yep. it, it was a pleasure to be to be with uh, people uh, who also love astronomy and and uh, observe universe. And uh, okay, maybe see you see you sometimes in the future. Yeah, maybe more when when, uh, when four comes out, we'll definitely have you back and uh, do a little work uh, on SIPs. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Pavel. Well, okay. again, have cool. a good night. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, guys. Eric, Pete, Pavel. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Pete, you got one minute left to watch the game. Um, yeah. And uh, everybody, yeah. Remember, keep imaging, keep educating and clear skies, and we'll see you Wednesday night. Have a good night, everybody. See you, everybody. Okay, bye. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.